Hi everyone, it's Karen here. Welcome to another video with me. And today I'm gonna to share with you how I created this square card using the gorgeous Wren Fairy as the focal point. It's 12 centimeters by 12 centimeters. I'm using Distress Oxides for the backgrounds, but you can use inks just as well. The colors that I'm using, Shaded Lilac for the overall background, Dusty Concord and Seedless Preserve give us the texture in the clouds. For our main image, I'm using Versafine Clear Nocturne. And then for the trees, to create this sort of misty, hazy look, I'm using Versafine Clear Chianti Morning Mist with a bit of hickory smoke around the edge to create that little mist. I've got Miniature Star Stamp in black with my white Posca pen. I'm also using a bit of a white ink pad here. You can use gesso, white crayon, just to create a soft effect around the moon. I've used the moon stamp. And here my trees, I'm using forest scene. It's a lovely set of trees. So we'll get started. As I said, size of my card is 12 centimeters by 12 centimeters. I'm using multifarious cardstock because it's lovely and smooth. It will take this blend well. A piece of copy paper. I've got my blending sponge and I'm starting with shaded lilac. First thing I'm going to do is make sure that my blending sponge is well inked. And I'm going to start off the edge of my card. And move in a circular motion all over the whole card. So people say to me, how do you get such a nice, even, smooth blend? And there are a few tips to get you that beautiful blend. One, use the best card. Secondly, make sure that your sponge is well inked. Three, move your sponge in a circular motion, not two wider steps. You can see if I've done it widely and there's not enough ink on that sponge, you're gonna create these scratches. And sometimes those scratches are really hard to get out. You can, Distress Oxides gives you the best chance of removing those scratches by pressing harder down on the sponge. I also like to hold my sponge this way because it gives me a bit more control over the edge of the tool. So you can see what we've got there is beautifully smooth, clean blend. So we're just gonna blend this all over the whole card. Now, if you can't get that smooth blend, don't worry, because when we put our clouds in, that will hide some of the uneven blending. Now, to create our clouds, we are going to use kitchen towel. And I'm just gonna tear it in different ways to get the bubbles or the fluffiness of clouds. Super fun. So I'm just going to, you can see I've gone all around the edge. And then I'm bringing, even when I've got to go to the middle, I am still starting off the edge and bringing my sponge to the center. Turning the card around so that you get easy access. making sure that the blend is relatively smooth. It's not perfect, this one, but as I said, we are going to be forgiven because we are going to create texture with our clouds. So I'm just gonna clean this worktop so that we don't bring that color onto the rest of our card. So now that we've got our base colour down, I'm going to take the moon stamp and I'm using shaded lilac again. And I know I don't often stamp with oxides, but
but in this case I don't want the crisp image that the VersaFine clairs give me. So I'm just going to pop my moon somewhere closer to the top of the card. And I'm going to stamp it again, just turning it ever so slightly. And it doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same place over each other, because you know, the moon is that sort of misty, hazy look. Okay, and now the fun bit. We're gonna take a piece of kitchen towel and we're just going to tear it. You kind of want to try to get a few highs and lows. So it's not perfectly straight. Okay, this is going to be perfect, but then you also use this for different sides of the clouds. I'm going to take, first I'm going to take shaded lilac, which is what we started with. And again, you're going to be saying, well, do I need to put shaded lilac? How is that going to show up? But it creates the initial layer for our clouds. And then I'm going to start on the kitchen towel and just flick it off lightly. Obviously, I'm avoiding going over the moon where I've just stamped there. I'm going to move it down. And because we've, we tear it, that's fine. Improvise as we go along. <laughs> Now, I, I wonder if you can see this. Can you see where I had a piece of this kitchen towel that was just sort of frayed? It's created this lovely variation in the cloud there. That's, <laughs> who could get excited over kitchen towel and clouds? But I can, and I have. This is so therapeutic. So you can see now I'm just moving the kitchen towel in different ways. And if some of those frayed pieces fall off, no worries. It all adds to the overall texture and look of the piece. Again, you can see I'm orienting the angle of the kitchen towel in a different way so that it makes look as though those clouds are all floating across the sky. So there you go, first layer done. I might just put a tiny another piece here. Bear in mind, you're gonna have some trees at the bottom of this card. So they will come sort of over there. Now, same piece of kitchen towel. I'm just going to use different parts of it and repeat the process with Seedless Preserve. Now Seedless Preserve is quite a strong colour so you want to start softly. Again you can have so much fun with this in terms of which way you will lay the kitchen towel. going to repeat this process with Dusty Concord. When I feel like I've got a bit too much ink on my sponge, I will just dab it off to the side because you can always add more afterwards. It's a bit harder to take it away.
So once you're happy with all your clouds, we're going to pop these away for now. And we are going to stamp our main image. For this, I'm going to use my stamping platform. I like to use the platform when it's a solid image like this to make sure that I get her right. Now I want her face to be in the moon with one hand out and one hand in. That way she's sort of allowing the magic to float through. Oh my goodness. Now, normally I would use my VersaFine Clear Nocturne, but oh my goodness, my ink pad dried up. I have another one coming, yay. But for now, I will use this one, which is still VersaFine Black Onyx. And I'm just doing this tapping motion. And there we have our beautiful little rain fairy, beautifully stamped on our card. Pop this away. There we have her. Gorgeous detail. Look at those wings. Look at that hair. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Now we're going to take our forest scene, which is this lovely set of trees here. And I'm going to take VersaFine Clear Chianti. And I'm just going to ink up my trees. And I'm going to do it second generation. So you can see that I've stamped those at different heights around her feet. And I'm just going to go in with one or two images stamped in Morning Mist. Morning Mist is this lovely greyish colour and I think that will give it, again, second generation, give it a tiny bit more depth and meaning with this sort of ghosty colour. No, I didn't stamp that correctly. There we go, because I want that to stamp behind. So there we've got our lovely little array of trees beneath where she is flying. Then I'm going to take my miniature stars. Stamp and again, I'm going to use Morning Mist. Just this lovely greyish colour. And I'm just going to pop a few of these stars in and around her. As I say, she's welcoming the magic, sprinkling the magic wherever she's going. Lovely. And now I'm going to take my smoothie, my seedless preserve. Actually, before I do the edge, I'm just going to do a bit of white around this moon. It's sort of looking quite misty anyway, but I'm just going to take just a blending sponge. You can use a piece of cut and dry. You can use a crayon. And I'm just going to create a bit of a misty look around the edge of the moon. I might even put a bit of that. It's ever so light and faint, but just adds a bit of something in and amongst the trees here. It's as though the mist is 
rising amongst the trees. Lovely. Then I'm going to take my smoothie, my seedless preserve. And I'm just going to go all around the outside of my card. Again, oh, this is very dark. Circular motion. By doing this around the outside, we create a frame around the whole card. And that draws our eye to the centre of the image and helps us focus on the main bit of it. And then the very last thing I'm going to do before mounting is I'm going to use my Posca pen and I'm just going to dot in and around. You can see I'm not overthinking this. The white dots just add a little bit of extra magic in between the stars. Hey, if you wanted to add some fairy dust, some glitter, That's the fun bit. So there we have it. There is our gorgeous little wren fairy in and amongst the clouds and the trees spreading her bit of magic. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I'd love to see what you make. So thanks for watching and I'll be back again soon. Bye.